but I found these cool tip weaving caterpillars on the side of the road. I am unaware of if these things are actually unique to this part of the world or not, and worth, you know, coming out here to tape before heading off to Australia, but they could be. Don't know. There may be similar organisms in other parts of the world, but let's take a look at them anyhow. Just see the huge harvestman or daddy long legs. Ah. Uh, huh? Something a little bit huh? unnerving about walking around with a backpack full of moccasins. Beautiful a cotton mouth. Rooting bears. It's amazing. Grasps the female. Big ones. I stepped on one. And cracks with all the bees supposed to do the house. I need a milk. I am still unaware of if similar creatures exist elsewhere, but what I can say is that these are eastern tent caterpillars. They will turn into a moth, so well, they are a species of moth. And they're either known as tent caterpillars or a lampet moth. These caterpillars are a very social larva and have many neat characteristics about them. Different behaviors you can observe in the ways in which their actual tents are organized. They have multiple layers to it that they create and maintain throughout their day-to-day -day lives. And they'll put ever-increasing tension on outer layers, creating multiple layers that they can move through and have protection. And they have entrances and exits, typically on junction points of the tree that they're hosting in. These guys also have some neat abilities when it comes to the way they develop. The female can lay eggs of 20, or sorry, 200 to 300 in the preceding or previous year. Then the next year after the winter when spring comes and the tree starts to bud, the caterpillars can hatch out even though they are done developing before the previous year, year's termination. But then they chew their way out of the egg and begin to construct these colonies and the structures and feed upon the host plant the next year. Though I do not believe that is the behavior we are witnessing here, seeing as this is actually midsummer upon the recording of this footage. But it is interesting that they have the ability to behave in the manner previously described. The display you were able to see earlier and will probably see repeat itself several times is a defensive behavior where they will, where they will begin to thrash about and that movement will spread from one caterpillar to the next as they pick up on its happening. It's meant to deter predators and create a moving target that's harder to deal with. It is often meant to deal with certain types of parasitoids, wasps and flies who would lay eggs on the caterpillars to have the caterpillar act as a host organism for their larva. Another fun fact with these guys is that the tents they create are among the largest of any tent caterpillars in the world. So they were actually an interesting find after all before making the trek halfway around the planet. I always think they're neat to see in the trees as you're driving along. You see them and always think, well, is now a good time to pull over and take a look? And I'm glad I did. I used to live in states where they didn't occur and I would only ever see them on TV and Discovery Channel and thought how cool it would be to actually see them. And stating that, I'll admit that I didn't even fully appreciate this display upon viewing it. It's... Hmm. One of those things I guess you can place it and don't appreciate what you have the opportunity to encounter. Something to make sure not to repeat too much. The way in which they construct their tents is affected by the way sun interacts with it. In experimental conditions, they have even been made to build their tents upside down by having the direction of light altered. This species is capable of doing their thing 
earlier in the season than other caterpillars. They're one of the first to emerge, or potentially can be. In this instance, these were not exhibiting that behavior, but they can come out earlier due to the way they follow light with their tent structures and the way that they use it to pick up heat and elevate their temperatures. It also elevates the humidity levels within the tent structure itself, which is believed to potentially facilitate um, easier molting. And they will also migrate a little bit, a little distance at least, in certain circumstances from their tent in order to procure more food to eat. And during their last stage of life, before their final uh, cocoon or chrysalis formation, turn into a moth, they don't actually contribute to the web or the tent because they need to save all their silk production for themselves for forming their cocoon. Something else interesting about these guys is as they move about, they continually emit silk from their spinnerets until, you know, that last stage of their life. And because of this, their frequently used pathways will become very obviously marked with silk as well as a pheromone trail to allow the other caterpillars to know where to go to feed. They are also known as somewhat of a pest species, though to be fair all they tend to do is damage ornamental trees which recover fairly quickly, so calling them a pest to me at least seems like a fair bit of an exaggeration. They're a pest to human eyes who would prefer a tree look nice than have an interesting organism in front of them, so there's that. And they're also somewhat toxic and have been known to cause problems in horses. And for today, it seems like that's really about all I've got. I was going to put this together better. And I really don't want this to become more of a trend. But this is more something I'm just throwing together now to have another video put together and get something out. Um, there will be much better things to happen in Australia. But I just wanted to make sure to keep something going get some new information out there and make sure to keep in a rhythm before I forget to create more content for everybody. So hopefully you enjoyed this at least a little bit. Well, goodbye till next time and as always, thanks for watching.